all of my books have really come from just real life experiences and a desire to try and find answers and advice for myself and not being able to find them whenever I would look for them. So I just have kind of taken it upon myself to be able to go and find those answers and put them in a book for other people that might be in a similar situation to what I was in. And what I realized after doing, well, actually while doing my second book that I just graduated book is my mom very kindly told me that the now what's never stop. You're listening to the Almost 30 podcast hosted by Krista Williams and Lindsay Simsek. Almost 30 started as a conversation about the transition from our 20s to our 30s. But then we realized life is full of transitions. So we expanded our mission. We are an intuition-led, wellness-focused lifestyle podcast that promises to deliver authentic conversations, diverse points of view, and insights rooted in optimism, growth, and intention. The Almost 30 Nation community is a group of purposeful dreamers who are smart, passionate, and always seeking the full potential in every aspect of their lives. At Almost 30, we're making magic together. We dream it, and then we do it. Thanks so much for tuning into the Almost 30 Podcast. Here we go. What's up, everyone? Hello. Welcome. Welcome to Almost 30. Greetings. It's your girls, Linz and Krista. We're so glad you're here. If this is your first time listening, so glad you found us. This podcast was started during our transition from our 20s to our 30s. We are now in our 30s. Uh, figuring out a whole new slew of things. Life is good, baby. <laughs> I just want to say, life gets better as you get older. It's true. If can't you're wait. out there feeling like, uh oh, can't wait till I'm seventy. <laughs> Honestly, I can't I'm wait till like fifty. I want, when I saw I want. when I saw Jenna Aniston turn fifty, I was like, mm-hmm. wow. I mean, or like J Lo. <laughs> Yeah. If you're look like honestly, it's not about how you look, but looking like that at 50 is very nice. <laughs> I'll look at that at like at 20. Uh, I just can't wait to freely say whatever I want. You could do that now. No. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. But there is like a um a permission yes. that happens after a certain People are age. like, oh, they're just older. Yeah, totally. <laughs> they're just I say that about my grandmother. I'm like, yes. Mm-hmm. My grandma. My gra- my grandpa too gets away with saying everything. <laughs> just like <laughs> no accountability. Insane. No accountability. They just they just free for all and they're super honest. But um yeah, so glad you're here. I'm really excited about this episode. Mm-hmm. It was such a joy to record with Catherine. Um she is so beautiful and <laughs> she's so beautiful. She's magnetic for sure. Yeah, from the inside out, for real. Like yeah. I just felt like Especially, you know, in Hollywood and, you know, she's not necessarily in the thick of Hollywood, but she's married to Chris Pratt and she's grown up kind of in the spotlight in a way. And so, you know, it's always really a joy to connect with someone who's so grounded. And I do think like her family was such a big part of that. But yeah, her new book, The Gift of Forgiveness is out today. So you can get it everywhere books are sold, whether it's on Amazon or in bookstores. But I just thought it was such a an appropriate topic for us to be talking about. I've just had conversations with friends around forgiveness and we didn't even know we were talking about forgiveness. We were talking about how they were feeling physically, how they just can't get over this or that. And there's such a connection there and they didn't realize that most of the pain they were experiencing was because they hadn't either forgiven themselves or other people. So we talk a lot about that process and what that can look like and how it's different for everyone. Yeah. And when we were talking to her, I was realizing that forgiveness is truly the ultimate form of vulnerability. It's exposing yourself to the possibility of being hurt again. It's letting someone in potentially. It's the ego releasing of the ego to believe that you need the pain to be who you are. It's allowance of change. It's allowance of the possibility of being okay. It's allowance of emotion and feeling. And it's so it's so layered. And I really didn't think about it until I had the book in front of us, in front of me, and we were interviewing her that I realized how profound forgiveness was and is. And, you know, through different periods of my life, I I 
think I maybe bypassed a lot of the process of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So I would say that I would forgive, but I would really bypass a lot of like the pain part of it and a lot of the anger that I'm really working with now within different traumas within my life. And I think it's so important for me to look at forgiveness and go back to the basics of what that process is. Because if I think about, you know, the things in my life that have been traumatic or that I carry with me, have I forgiven or am I just bypassing part of the process? And now I sort of detach from it or sort of make jokes about things. So it just was really profound for me to kind of go back in my life and to really rethink how I forgive if I've forgiven, have I gone through the process that makes me feel integrated and whole with it? Yeah. It made me think too about like how I would become so comfortable in that pain. So it like really didn't require me to step up and move through, you know, like the, like my breakup I've, I talked about on the podcast and how I just, I didn't forgive myself for a really long time. And I think it's because I really didn't want to move forward and do the work required to become the person I was supposed to become. That just seemed like too much at the time. So I do think forgiveness is certainly a big task. Like I don't think people should take it lightly. And it it does take, I think, practice. And Catherine talks about, you know, really working that forgiveness muscle. But yeah, I do think it's a way for us to just kind of stay where we are, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, and I would story. I wonder, I wonder if what you would think about this, you know, I think when I first met you, I don't think you had forgiven yourself for that. No. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. I think it's been recently in the past year or so. Yeah, for sure. You, and I, I didn't even realize. And we're talking about Lindsay cheating on her ex-boyfriend. Yeah. I didn't realize that like, I think I said that I was good before I was good. Do you know what I mean? And so I think it was actually kind of during ayahuasca that Mm -hmm. I saw our relationship and exactly, I saw the why behind it and it was really beautiful. And I actually saw him and his now wife together. And I was just, I was just so happy for them, you know, and I understood that he learned things within the relationship that made him better for her. And I learned things. So yeah, it took a it took a long time and then what I was doing was perpetuating how I felt about myself by choosing people who confirmed that for me. You know, who really didn't like value me and so it was just really an interesting process, but yeah, I mean it could be your ticket to a much freer life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I completely agree and and I think too, you know, when I think about forgiveness, it's like I can sit there in meditation and in quiet and think and ask myself and my body, like, have I forgiven? You know, if I brought up a a traumatic situation Mm -hmm. in my life and I could sit there and think like, have I forgiven and ask my body and ask my soul, it hopefully will be very clear and apparent if you have or have not. And I could feel it in my heart. You know, Mm -hmm. I feel like a little wrenching in my heart a little bit when I think about certain things and it's like, oh, interesting. Like, let's go there. Let's explore there. What would be the process to forgive or let go there? And it's, And the freedom, exactly like you said, that you feel when you forgive is the best. You know, for me, in my relationship with Justin, it's like when we have our moments of fighting or whatever, when I'm a person that needs sorry, and I know there's a lot of people within, you know, personal relationships that don't need that. I need that. That communication of understanding of like validity of my own feelings and Mm. the understood nature of like, not, I'm not going to do it again, but it's like, I'm sorry, which just means so much to me. And I don't know if that was, I was modeled that a lot in my life, but I'm a person that needs sorry. And Justin's not, Justin's more of like a actions person. So it's been interesting within our lives too, when we practice forgiveness in my personal relationships, like the different ways in which we want forgiveness to be expressed and experienced within our lives. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's just kind of validating both each other, Yeah, you know, and I don't know, I think, and we asked Catherine actually about forgiveness within her relationship and she's like, Chris is perfect. So whatever, Mm -hmm. (laughs) which I was like, I know he is perfect, to be honest, (laughs) but I'm sure that within their life, you know, they're only, they haven't even been married a year, but they will experience times when they will be 
challenge to forgive one, one another. But I do think that's where kind of the muscle work does come in where you're like, okay, I've been here before with this person. And how has it felt when I've forgiven them and let, you know, was validated and then let it go? Like, I, I just think, especially within a romantic relationship, it's it's probably more of a a daily practice. You know, yeah, and with um, it was beautiful to talk about with Catherine too, and I think this is really resonant for our audience. Uh, we see these conversations happening within our community quite often is related to female friendships and female relationships. One of the impetuses of this book was her having a very profound female relationship that ended, or you know, they broke up in quotes. And she had to learn to forgive that very close female friend that she considered a sister. So within this, I think, it is really good to open up that conversation about female relationships and female forgiveness. So, you know, a lot of the women that are listening probably have had an experience where they feel very connected to another woman within their life, another friend, and maybe they no longer are friends with that person and it's been very hard and challenging. So I think that was a very, very profound thing that like we haven't explored really in super detail. So Mm -hmm. I think that was a beautiful part of our conversation. Yeah. And, and within the gift of forgiveness, there's a couple handfuls of stories of people who have just gone through really hard, tragic situations that have been um, challenged to forgive, you know, the person that did something to them or what have you, or a circumstance. And um, so Catherine interviewed all of these people and recounted their stories. And it's just really, it's really, really beautiful. I felt like the vulnerability in the storytelling and the relatability. So I think you guys are going to get a lot from this interview and from the book. Yeah, and she's also on tour. So you can mm-hmm. see her on her book tour, um, which is very exciting. We'll share those dates in the Secret Almost 30 Podcast Facebook group. And you can also find those on our website. Um, and you can follow Catherine on Instagram at Catherine Schwarzenegger. And the book is... The gift of forgiveness. So before we get into this, just quick announcements from almost 30. Uh, so we are hosting our second annual retreat at in Malibu at Calamigos Ranch. We just secured more amazing speakers, healers, and guests. You can check our website at almost30podcast.com slash retreat. There are a few spaces left and we cannot wait to connect with the women that join Last year, we had 24 women and it was one of the most profound experiences of the year. These women still connect and communicate and just felt so moved. So we would love to support you and enjoy a few days in Malibu at the Five Star Calamigos Ranch with some amazing women. You can go to almost30podcast.com slash retreat to learn more. Yeah, and if you're looking for a community online, we do have our secret Facebook group with over almost 20,000 women in there chatting every single day, supporting one another, laughing, asking questions. Uh, It's really beautiful. So if you're looking for some beauty on the internet, you know, we got you. Search Secret Almost 30 Podcast Facebook group and request to join. So thank you so much for listening. We appreciate you. And if this resonates with you, I'm sure it will resonate with someone that you care about and love. So pass it on to them. That means the world to us. And we will see you on the other side. See you soon. I've turned a lot of my friends back home onto collagen and I've checked back in with them. I did it over the holidays. The only thing that they've changed is using collagen. And I turned them on to my favorite collagen, the multi-collagen protein from Ancient Nutrition. I love the vanilla. Some of my friends love the chocolate. Take your pick. But... It is absolutely delicious. You could put in your coffee and your smoothies. Uh, Really get creative. It has nine grams of protein, zero carbs, zero fat. It supports a healthy gut, skin, hair, nails, and joints. And it features collagen types one, two, three, five, and 10. And it's sourced from non-GMO, cage-free, cruelty-free sources, and is always made without hormones. We've had Dr. Axe on the podcast. He is one of the founders of Ancient Nutrition and just a wealth of knowledge. Listen to that episode, but go on to ancientnutrition.com. Man, oh man, it is a resource. It has articles, recipes. You can search via health focus. So maybe you need immune support or gut health support, fitness, energy, what have you. This is an incredible website, ancientnutrition.com. You can use the code almost 30 for 20% off first time orders. That's ancientnutrition.com. Use the code almost 30 for 20% off one time orders. We, we talk a lot about 
you know, because we started this when we were transitioning from our 20s to our 30s. And that's why I love, you know, and we're going to talk about your new book, but the I Just Graduated Now What? Because it is that feeling. And that's kind of what inspired our initial conversations of like, wait a second, like we didn't learn any of this in school or from our parents even, you know, for the most part. And so I'd love to kind of take it back and like learn who Catherine was at that time. You know, I'm sure there's so many relatable things and stories and questions that you had. I, so I wrote the book really just because my second book, Um, And actually, all of my books have really come from just real life experiences and a desire to try and find answers and advice for myself and not being able to find them whenever I would look for them. So I just have kind of taken it upon myself to be able to go and find those answers and put them in a book for other people that might be in a similar situation to what I was in. And what I realized after doing... Well, actually, while doing my second book, the I Just Graduated book, is my mom very kindly told me that the now what's never stop. And there are you know, questions that will be around you for the rest of your life. And you start dating somebody and it's you know now what? Or it's you get engaged and then it's like now what? You get married. So it's, it's kind of something, a theme that you'll have for the rest of your life. And it's all about your perspective and your mindset on those different phases in your life. And when I graduated from college, I really just felt... I looked at a lot of my friends around me and I felt like we all went to college to prepare us for life after college. And then we were in college and didn't learn the necessary tools. Unless, of course, you go and you say, I want to be a lawyer, I want to be a doctor, and you know exactly what you're going to do. You really don't know what you're supposed to do when you graduate. And what I mean by that isn't, you know, you know you're supposed to get a job, but you don't necessarily know the details about, you know, making a perfect resume, what to do in an interview, how to get your resume out to the perfect people, how to balance a checkbook, what your budgeting situation should be, like all of the things that are life skills that would have been really helpful to learn in college and in that those formative years of your life to prepare you for being on your own. I just felt very unprepared for it. And it wasn't anything to do with my school because it was an amazing school, but it just really had to do with the fact that I was, I felt like, okay, great. I had this great experience in college and I was able to take amazing classes. But now what do I do with those classes? <laughs> I was very confused as to what I was supposed to do after and I noticed my friends were as well. And I, you know, was lucky enough to be able to talk to my mom and my dad about that. But I'm also the oldest in my family. So I didn't really have somebody to look at and say, like, okay, that's what I'm supposed to do. So it was a lot of figuring it out. And then I was just kind of like, I want to be able to continue my writing because I had done my first book already. And so I wrote a proposal for this book and worked on it for the first year and a half after I graduated college and then went on a book tour for it. So it timed out really well, but it was definitely an an interesting time. (laughs) That's so true. And like every part of what you said feels so relatable. You know, we feel the same and it's funny. So we started almost 30, like when we were in that transition from college to like real world and really figuring out like everything that we didn't know. And we bring on guests to, to help us in that, in that vein. But it was like, here you are, here's all these things, here's the world, and, and now what are you gonna do with it? And it just felt very confusing, you know, for us too. So I love what you do, you know, with the forgiveness book or with this book, which is really like creating a conversation around things that are being talked about, but not really in a totally public space. And I don't feel like that conversation was being had about what to do after college, the things that we didn't learn yet. And the same with forgiveness. You know, I I know that it's something that people really struggle with or work with or think about quite often, but it isn't really a topic of conversation as much as it should be. So for you, you know, when you're bringing these conversations to the forefront, like what has been your motivation for that? Like, have you ever been scared to talk about these things publicly or write books about things like forgiveness or these topics? A hundred percent. I mean, I, I think I really faced that fear with my first book and I've faced the fear with every single book that I've done and really just um, anytime that you come out and talk about something openly and honestly, you know, people are, you open uh, your life and your situation and, and the world to just criticizing and being critical of 
really everything that you do. And I think especially now with social media being what is today, which is different than what it was when I did my first book, people can say anything that they want and get seen for it. So I think that it's definitely more challenging. But I think for my first book, uh, Rock What You've Got, I didn't intend on it being a uh, really a, an open diary of my entire experience in high school and middle school of my awkward phase and you know, not feeling great about my thighs or my hips or my butt. Like I didn't intend on that. And when I was writing the book, I was kind of walking this fine line of not sharing anything and then sharing everything. And I had to make a decision while I was in the writing process of just really deciding to go for it and just really share everything because... And that was really scary for me because you, again, like you open it up to people saying, you know, crazy things or judging you for it or making fun of you for it. And I was also 20 when I wrote the book and 21 when it came out. And so I was not that I was still necessarily, I guess for most people considered to be in an awkward phase, but I definitely look back at myself at 21 and I definitely was afraid of, you know, talking about mm-hmm, my period for the getting my period for the first time or my first boyfriend. Like those are all things that, you know, were uh, scary for me, but I realized, and this is kind of what I always try to keep in mind with all of my books and and especially with Forgiveness Book is that if I am able to have one person read my book and feel like they're not alone and help them in their journey in their life, then it's totally worth it for me to be scared or for me to have shared too much about you know me in middle school and feeling awkward in my own body or whatever that is, or you know, struggling with forgiveness as an adult or struggling with it when I was in my early 20s or, or younger, like those things are all worth it for me if I can just get one person to feel like they're not alone in their journey and that they feel comfortable and confident moving forward and that mm-hmm. it will get better. Yeah, definitely. I think like the community piece is so important, especially among women. You know, it's it's so healing. And I didn't realize that until we started this. You know, I was kind of always more so a loner and didn't have amazing experiences with other women like in middle school and part of high school. So um, it's been a very healing experience. And I know you, you start The Gift of Forgiveness by telling a story about like kind of what inspired you to start like digging deeper into forgiveness around your relationship with um, a best friend at a point in your life. So I, I'd love to just touch on that because I do think, you know, it's so it's so real. It, like where you you transition to different seasons of your life and also just change as a person and you grow apart from people that you once thought might be around forever, you know, and be deeply connected forever. So what was that like? And what were ways in which you were able to kind of heal that? Well, I think I, you know, and I think this is for most people, you kind of grow up with this idea of what forgiveness is based on, um, and I talk about this in my book, based on what you learn when you're in elementary school, which is, you know, you hurt someone's feelings, you say sorry, and you move on. Um, And as you get older, and you kind of have different experiences in your life, that challenge that understanding of what you once thought forgiveness was. And it gets more complicated as we get, you know, our feelings hurt in worse ways, or we, you know, face and encounter different things. We're challenged in our forgiveness muscle, as I've learned to call it. And I think when I was in high school, I didn't really know what that meant at all. And especially when I was in college, I didn't really pay attention to what forgiveness really meant. And especially after writing this book, I didn't understand what it meant because no one had talked to me about it in a way where you're able to shift an understanding of forgiveness and not look at it as a gift that you give another person, but a gift that you really give yourself. And when I was able to make that shift in my life, which largely came from the whole process of writing this book and interviewing such amazing people, you're able to, I can see for myself, I'm able to look at forgiveness in a way that is all about how I feel and how I choose to live my life and not at all about another person. And so when I was in that cycle of feeling like, I don't want to forgive this person because they didn't deserve my forgiveness. They didn't ask for my forgiveness. That leaves you in this cycle of just stirring with your own anger and resentment. And even if you say, oh, I forgave that person and then you see them, which is what happened to me is I would see 
this person that I once considered my sister. And I would have so much anxiety about, oh my God, you know, I'm going to see her or, oh my God, I brought up, you know, someone brought up her name and how did that feel? And I think especially for women, these friendships that we make when we're little and that we think of as you're going to be there by my side when I get married and you're going to be around when Mm -hmm. I have babies and, you know, all these times in our lives and that doesn't work out. That's uh, devastating. And so I think, you know, as women, we really keep our girlfriends super close and we tell them everything and we share our lives with them and we think of them as sisters and that they're never going to go away. And the idea of these history friendships not lasting for all of eternity wasn't something I ever thought was possible. And so for me, it was this, you know, it was this devastating time in my life where I was just like, I I didn't know. It felt like everything around me was unsure because it felt like the one thing that I was sure of was that that friendship would last forever. And, um, And as I've been talking about this book, I'm seeing that it's a theme that's happening in a lot of women's lives, mainly in their 20s Mm -hmm. so far, um, of really learning and having these awakenings of, you know, a friendship that was perfect for me at 15 and was exactly what I needed isn't necessarily what you need and isn't perfect for you at 26 or 27, and that's okay. And I didn't know that that was okay. And so I resisted that a lot. And um, it was really through doing this book that I was able to understand what forgiveness really meant and do the work that I thought I had already done, but I actually hadn't and get to a place where, you know, my old best friend and I are good with Mm. each other now. Yeah, relate to relate to so many pieces of that. And you said something at the beginning, you know, about the twenties where you don't really know how to forgive and you don't really know what that is. And in your foreword, there was a the, a piece of it that really resonated with me as something that I did in my twenties, um, which was defining who I was by those who have hurt me. So kind of using the inability to forgive as like a defining personality trait in a way, not allowing that forgiveness within my life. So I really resonated with that. And especially, you know, your sentiment as it relates to your friend. When you talk about the work related to forgiveness, I'm really interested in what that looks like for you and and what that could look like for other people. Because, you know, we very much do the work in other areas of my life. And forgiveness is one of those common themes that I probably should go a little bit deeper in. So I'd love to hear your work, your work process. So I was really um, interested in getting any any and every kind of help I could possibly find and get my hands on. And I I think just to touch back on what you were saying about living your life, defining it by the hurt that you've experienced, a huge part of forgiveness is, um, and a challenge with uh, practicing forgiveness is feeling that by practicing forgiveness, you're betraying your own hurt and pain. And that was a theme that came up in a lot of people's interviews that I did and also comes up in your in my own life is if I'm forgiving that person, am I going to release this pain or these scars that I have on my heart? And if I do that, what does that mean about how I think about myself? Is that okay to do? So there is this you know inner turmoil that people experience about forgiveness. Um, and I think when you're able to make again that switch of it being for yourself and not for the other person is when hopefully that betrayal of your own hurt can get a little bit easier and and better to understand to be able to practice the forgiveness process. So that's a big theme that's in the book. And when it comes to the health and the work on forgiveness, I definitely did a ton of therapy. There were a lot of things going on in my life in my early 20s that I was definitely in need of and I wanted to be able to have more advice on how to handle certain things in my life. I wanted to get I wanted to be the best version of myself and really work through things. I know some people kind of like to avoid really facing challenges head on in their life, especially emotional challenges, because they're often very, very challenging. I wanted to kind of look at things right in the face and work through them. And I credit therapy, going to church, being able to have amazing and open conversations with my my mom and my dad and my siblings and also really incredible girlfriends at that time in my life to be able to understand and work my way through forgiveness. And I, you know, I grew up going to a Catholic church. So I would go to my my Catholic church that I grew up to and then I would go to a new church that my brother took me to on Wednesdays and I would listen to these, 
you know, these sermons on forgiveness and I would learn something there and I would want to read a book on forgiveness or a poem on forgiveness. And then I would want to go to therapy and talk about forgiveness. And then I would want to go to my friends and talk about what I had just learned. So it was really a, uh, I would say a collection of me going to anywhere I could to kind of get help and advice for myself. And then I was lucky enough to later be able to share it all in the book. So it worked That's amazing. Out well. <laughs> and I just I love it. And I just want to reiterate too. So it's like having the ability and to face things head on. So really taking it on and making the intention to work through this is very, very important. And then you had community around you, people that you were honest, that were supportive of you. And then um, you had faith, which I think is very important. I think faith is a huge part of that component. And then you had support and were able to admit you needed help with therapy. So all of those things are so important and so key and I think are really helpful for people when thinking about forgiveness. Does anyone remember sex ed? We learned to prevent pregnancy at all costs. I went to a Catholic school, all girls private Catholic school, and that's what we did. We have all the tools to prevent pregnancy, but when it comes to planning ahead for it, it's a mystery. Time for fertility education, we found modern fertility and we're like, aha, this is an easy and affordable way to test your fertility hormones at home with a simple finger prick. You mail it in with a prepaid label and you'll get your personalized results within 10 days. Traditional testing with your doctor can cost over $1,000, but modern fertility only costs $159 to get the same information. And if you go to modernfertility.com slash almost 30, you can get $20 off your test. And if you have an HS. HSA or FSA, you can use those dollars on modern fertility. And what's also great, you get to see um, insight into how many eggs you have, hormone levels, and any reproductive red flag. The results go in depth with what hormone each hormone means. And you can also talk one-on-one with a fertility nurse to review your results and options for next steps. So right now, Modern Fertility is offering our listeners $20 off the test when you go to modernfertility.com slash almost 30. That means your test will cost $139 instead of hundreds of thousands it would cost at a doctor's office. So modernfertility.com slash almost 30 to get $20 off. Okay, you've done it. So your creative passion is now your full-time job. But maybe you wish someone would have told you how much time drafting proposals, creating contracts, and chasing down payments would take. The good news is, is that HoneyBook can help you with all those tedious admin tasks so you can get back to doing what you love. HoneyBook was a game changer in the journey of creating this business and making it a full-time gig. So HoneyBook takes those tasks off your to-do list that you don't want to do so you can focus on what you're really good at in your business. They have business management tools and they organize your client communications, bookings, contracts, invoices all in one place and also helps you consolidate services like QuickBooks, Google Suite, Excel, and MailChimp. I cannot say enough about HoneyBook. This is a great way to get organized, get paid faster, and really create a solid, consistent, stable relationship with your clients. So for our listeners, huge, huge, huge. You get 50 percent off when you visit honeybook.com slash almost 30. Payment is flexible. So whether you're on a monthly or annually payment plan, you get 50% off when you visit honeybook.com slash almost 30. And I'm curious to know too, like what has been the journey with your ability to communicate and use your voice? You know, was there a time where you were afraid to speak up? You know, you mentioned like being able to have open conversations with your family and friends and really just be able to articulate what was going on in your inner world. Um, but we talk about it a lot on the podcast, just kind of using our our voices more, you know, putting that resonance out into the world. So I'd, I'd love to know kind of your journey with your voice. My journey with my voice. I think I am really grateful and I'm so blessed to have grown up with a mother and a grandmother, very uh, powerful, strong women in my life who always told me the importance of using my voice with anything and everything that I did. And I have very early memories of being really little and my grandma being somebody who would say, speak up, use your voice, speak up, very much would always talk about that. And my mom as a woman would always talk to my sister and I about the importance of using your voice as a woman and making sure that 
any relationship that we would be in, we wouldn't lose our voice because it was it's a common thing for women to be in a relationship and to lose their mm-hmm. voice in that relationship. And I think it's with, you know, it, it's in any relationship that you have. It can be a, you know, a guy that you're dating. It can be a girlfriend that you have that you've, you know, known for a really long time, or it can be a girl that you're dating, whatever it is, I think it's important to always be able to, for me, it's been really amazing to have my mom always remind me of the importance of staying true to myself and also being comfortable and confident enough to use my voice. And obviously there have been plenty of times in my life where I have not been comfortable um, enough to use my voice, even having amazing parents and having my mom constantly tell me about the importance of using my voice. I would say that I would say my first book definitely allowed me to feel comfortable with my voice in a way where I didn't care as much what people thought of me because I've always I've grown up in a family where the importance of helping others was always emphasized and I grew up doing that but I think for the first time when I did my first book I was doing something that was passionate that I was passionate about and I was speaking about something that I knew I knew about really well and that I was very clear I wanted to speak about and communicate about and use my voice to talk about and to connect with other people about. And I think that was probably the first time that I wasn't scared of what my high school friends would think of me or what anyone would read the book and think of me because I kind of thought of it as, you know, if I can, if there's a girl in, you know, Missouri who will read this book and feel like, oh, okay, she went through that and she feels better now and that that would be worth it for me. And I remember going to a Girl Scouts event in Kansas City and a little girl coming up on stage when I was doing a book signing for this book and a conversation with a bunch of Girl Scouts. And she was seven years old and she was talking about feeling fat and being bullied as a young girl and uh, and how she wanted to talk to me about how she felt so bad mm-hmm. about herself and she was so young and so cute and it just broke my heart and I just thought that every single thing that I had been nervous about putting in that book was totally worth it just for that moment that that girl could just feel like she wasn't alone in that journey so I I would say that that, that moment for me was big but when it comes to being in my family we I would say using your voice in my family was always something that was heavily encouraged, especially when I get my ex- entire extended family. It's like, if you don't use your voice, you don't get a word in at all. So it's... I can imagine. Yeah, like, You're like, I come, used it... When you come from a big family, you got to learn it's how to nice. use it with enthusiasm and fear because you have to like communicate to everyone. Um, just as a little yeah. side note, my boyfriend goes to the Gold's Gym in Venice and your dad is there mm-hmm. quite often. And he said he's the nicest man. He's like, he's like the poor man cannot yeah. work out. Everyone is oh, coming up to him so the entire time. And he is so kind. <laughs> it's so hilarious. He's like, I don't know how he does it. I know. He is. He's, a, he's an angel. He's so true. It's yeah. He, but he loves, he like thrives in that environment because he's, you know, that's where he's the most comfortable, I think is just being in that in that gym and in that environment. And he's very just like loves it and soaks it all in when oh, he goes there. Sure. So those are all the time. So kind. Wow. Know, Justin, it's like not a big deal anymore. He's like, Arnold was there. Arnold was there. It's like <laughs> so freaking sweet. Um, but I wanted to talk about too. So, you know, talking when you mentioned heartbreaking, when we were reading the book, the interviews are inspiring and at points were heartbreaking for me to get through. It was just you know, there's so many different layers to a lot of the stories. There's so many different just tragedies that were had. So I want to talk about your book writing process and how you were able to really stay positive and how you were able to really look at the good in these situations because some of them are very intense. So for you, when you're doing these interviews, did you have to take breaks? Like, how did you find the people? Can you tell me a little bit more about the actual process? Yeah. So I blindly reached out to every single person that's in this book. I had done a ton of research on forgiveness just when I was wanting to learn about it myself. And I came across a lot of really interesting stories. And when I wrote the proposal for this book and it you know, got accepted, I started doing more and more research and came across a very long list of people's names and started just blindly reaching out to people to ask if I could talk to them about their stories and about the process of forgiveness. And uh, 
a lot of people turned me down and a lot of people, you know, said that I could talk to them and are, and are in the book, which I'm so grateful to all of them because every single person that's in this book wanted to be in this book with the desire to help others in their forgiveness journey and to inspire others to be able to practice forgiveness in their own lives. So it was a really beautiful thing to have everybody have a similar message and it and an intention going into these interviews. And when it comes to doing the interviews, I would really lock myself in my my office and I would schedule calls and meet up with people in person um, to talk to them. And I would record the interviews mm-hmm. with their permission. And, uh, and then I would transcribe them all. And after majority of the interviews, because they're so raw and vulnerable and open, a lot of times I would have to sit by myself in quiet to digest it. A lot of times I would cry with the people who were talking to me on the phone. And other times I would call people. Like I would call my mom and I would be like, I-, I just cannot believe this person's story. Like it's just insane. Or I would call, I remember I was, I would call oftentimes when I was doing this book. I would call my husband. I would just be like, I cannot believe that this person is able to practice forgiveness after everything that they've gone through. So I definitely had a lot of moments where I just had to... It was hard. Not hard. It was a lot to digest after talking and to them and, and just hearing their stories because they're just so incredible. And you look at your own life and then you're just like, could I do that? I don't think so. I don't know. And it just gets you questioning and thinking. And so I would try and write during those times, but I would also need to kind of sit by myself for a little bit to just digest them and uh, and take some time because they're yeah, very they're, heavy. Yeah. So heavy. But beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the one that stuck out to me was the one with Sarah Klein and her, you know, she was a victim of Larry Nasser. She was a gymnast and, you know, and this brings up kind of the larger issue that I think, I mean, I feel like I've been listening to so many whether it's podcasts or you know documentaries just about this very thing where it's this over time like long term abuse there is like grooming that's happening there is you know at a very young age with women um and i guess like from this interview and i'm sure you know you've spoken to other women in your life as well um and read about it it's just like how can you even wrap your head around the forgiveness that it takes. Like, it, where does the focus lie, I guess, when you forgive someone like this? Yeah, I'm just like, even reading it, I'm like, how the hell? How can she? Yeah, I mean, I, Sarah was an incredible person to interview and to talk to. And she's, you know, she was very mm. emotional and very open. And I, you know, to be able to talk to every single person in this book, especially after not ever having met them. And to have them go to the places that they went when talking to me was incredible because I think we have friends that we don't even go there with after like 10 years. So Sarah was an amazing person to talk to in her forgiveness journey. She's very open about, you know, definitely experiencing anger and um, and she talks a lot about the, uh, I think for her being able to go and, you know, stand in that courtroom and, and read and express herself and really be open and honest about her journey and the pain that she suffered and continues to suffer because of um, the abuse that she experienced was a really empowering moment for her and a, a big, a pivotal moment for her to kind of live her life in a new and different way after that experience. So you, I mean, there are stories in this book where, you know, Chris Williams, who lost pretty much his entire family in a car accident and he said he's able to forgive right in that moment. And you think, how could, how in the world could you possibly do that? How is that even possible? So there are a lot of, there are a lot of stories and experiences in this book where, you, as a reader and also as somebody who is interviewing them, you have moments of just being in like a state of shock that someone's able to be so strong to practice forgiveness in those situations. Completely. Another, yeah, it was, it's so profound. And one of the, you know, with Sarah and then with a few others, a theme that I noticed was the physicality of holding on to the anger and the trauma. You know, for Sarah, that was, you know, she stopped getting her period. She got very sick and there were others within there that got physically ill. So I would love to explore that, like the connection between the physicality of holding on to anger and then when you forgive. 
Yeah. I mean, that was definitely a big theme that was in the book. And actually, it was something that I experienced in my own life of just feeling this huge weight lifted off my shoulders whenever I'm able to practice forgiveness, especially in the moments that are, you know, that I, the situations where I've definitely struggled a long period of time with forgiveness, it's kind of like you feel in an instant, everything kind of changes. And if it's not in an instant, it's, you know, over time, but you feel a shift in your life for sure. And it was actually a video that my mom had sent me um, from one of the people who's in the book, Nadia Boltz Weber. And she's a, a, a pastor and she was in the book and she's talked a lot about being in AA and, and the forgiveness required when getting sober and being in that community. And she had a video that I watched before I ever talked to her that was... And it was actually before I even started writing this book that talked about forgiveness as being an action where you can use big bolt cutters to kind of cut those chains that tie you to whatever the incident was or the pain or the hurt that you're dragging around that's attached to you. And when I was able to kind of think of forgiveness as that in my life and also talk to other people about visualizing it as you sitting there and visualizing yourself as having these giant chains that were attached to each situation in your life that you were struggling with and walking through your life with that heavy those heavy chains and all those things attached to you and then really sitting down and realizing that you don't want to carry them with you wherever you go and using bolt cutters to really cut them all off um, and practice for and that is practicing forgiveness for me that visualization really helped me and I often find myself going back to it whenever I am struggling with forgiveness now or whenever I'm able to practice it. I go back to that visualization because I thought that it was so perfect and it really speaks really accurately to me about how much you carry around with you that isn't good for you. And whether it's making you sick or whether it's you know making you not be able to experience everything in your life that's beautiful to the fullest... Um, whatever the effect is that it has on you, if you can visualize cutting those and practicing forgiveness, it's just like a huge weight is lifted off of you and you can just experience things in a totally different way. So the physical part of it is a big component of practicing forgiveness and helped me a lot in that and is a theme that comes up with the majority of these interviews is this, you know, this idea of this weight being lifted off your shoulder in your life and being able to uh, practice forgiveness and go into life just having these incredible opportunities. Mm. Um, have you ever experienced any like physical reactions as it relates to forgiveness and not forgiving? Well, I would definitely... I when I And I talk about this in the beginning of the book, but when I was going through kind of my time of um, of ending my friendship with one of my best friends, I definitely had times where I would see her and I would have this anxiety and I would, you know, feel really anxious and nervous and I just wouldn't feel comfortable. And I didn't like that. And I've always been pretty in touch with my body and with my feelings and my reactions to things. And, and that was one that I did not find uh, to be a a pleasant one. And one that I didn't, I knew that I didn't want for myself. So that would probably be like the biggest physical reaction. And then that also comes with anger and frustration at yourself for still feeling those feelings. Why am I still feeling those feelings? Why can't I move on? All these people in this book moved on. Why can't I... You know, So you definitely have that those moments of being angry, frustrated, anxious, sad. You know, It's similar to... A lot of people talk about it as being similar to the stages of grief, which you know, are different for everybody, but there are stages there and people speak a lot about forgiveness as being a similar a similar experience to grief because you kind of go through these phases and they're different for everyone of being angry and frustrated and anxious. And so I definitely felt those in my experience. And is there ever it. a point, sorry, just to follow up, like is there ever a an appropriate time when forgiveness, we don't have to forgive? You know what I mean? Where like, I don't know if you redirect it back to yourself and you're just like, okay, I forgive myself for feeling like I can't forgive, but you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, self-forgiveness, of course, is one of the 
I would say probably the most challenging thing that people talk a lot about in the interviews that I did is, you know, it's one thing to forgive another person for doing something to you, but it's another thing to have to forgive yourself because you need to sit with that for maybe a little bit longer. Y'all, I just love going to bed. I love going to bed because I get to sleep and rest and recharge and rejuvenate my cells, but mainly because I love my bedding. Uh, I have Buffy bedding. They make super soft, earth-friendly bedding. It's cruelty-free. And ooh, you know what I also love? It's cooling and it's comfortable. So it's made from 100% eucalyptus fiber, which is just so damn soft. It's breathable and it's just way better than any polyester or downfilled comforters. So Buffy has bedding. They also have a comforter, which I love. It's super light, so comfortable. It's all plant-based, all eucalyptus. And eucalyptus uses 10 times less water than cotton to grow. And its fiber is produce, produced using recyclable earth friendly solvents. This is great for people with allergies. It's hypoallergenic and it's high thread count shuts out dust, mold, and mites for a happier sleeping environment. So if you'd like to try Buffy Van Oman, they have an array of products as well as colors. Uh, you can go to buffy.co and enter the code almost 30 for $20 off your Buffy comforter. That's buffy.co. Enter the code almost 30 to get $20 off. If you need to do a makeover on your morning beverage or maybe evening beverage or maybe midday beverage, I got you. Four Sigmatic is a brand that we trust wholeheartedly. They leverage the power of adaptogenic mushrooms to make incredible products like coffees, cacao, skincare, elixirs, lattes, and really creative blends. I love them so much. The coffee with lion's mane is rocking my world. So this is mushroom coffee with chaga and lion's mane. And this is so great for productivity, Focus, creativity. It's kickstarted my mornings and I feel awesome. And the taste is so, so smooth. Um, I also love their reishi hot cacao. This is like a hot chocolate. Y'all, I cannot say enough. This is rich and it just is like my night night juice. Check out foursigmatic.com slash almost 30. That's F-O-U-R-S-I-G-M-A-T-I-C.com slash almost 30. You can use the code almost 30 at checkout to get 15% off all these products. I would stock up if I were you. Foursigmatic.com slash almost 30. Use the code almost 30 at checkout for 15% off. I think uh, one of the things that I am always super clear about and always want to make sure that people are also clear about is that while I wrote this book, I'm not an expert on forgiveness. I am a fellow struggler with forgiveness and I will be for the rest of my life. I feel like I get inspiration from these people's stories and from other people's stories to be able to practice forgiveness and to you know, draw inspiration from these stories and, and, um, and apply them, think about them when I'm dealing with challenges with forgiveness in my own life. But I never would tell anybody you should for you should forgive this person or you really should practice forgiveness because i have no authority or place to do that all i can say is that when based on my research and talking to these people that when you are able to actually practice forgiveness at any time in your life it doesn't need to be in an instant it can be like deborah copakin and practice it 30 years later um, it can be you never practice forgiveness and that's okay it's totally up to you because all of our relationships with forgiveness are so unique and are so personal. And that's how that is handled and how people process that. So I think it's a, it's a challenging topic because I think a lot of people will read this book or hear about the book and say like, can you give me a quick three tips on how to forgive? And every single time I'm like, no, unfortunately I can't because it's so the forgiveness is so personal to every single person and it's unique to every single person and how they choose to handle it or not handle it is you know their their choice and i know plenty of people who are in their 60s or you know are in their 40s or 30s that are very clear that they don't want to practice forgiveness and that's okay and hopefully they'll be, they're able to get to a place one day where they're able to practice it but if they can't get there then that's totally their choice and i'm fully supportive of 
however anybody wants to choose to live their life when it comes to forgiveness. Peace and love, baby. <laughs> um, just as a last last question for me on the relationship with your with your friend, just because I feel like I can relate. I've had a dear friend that was similar situation to me. And I know there's a lot of girls in our community that have had very close female friendships that um, have provided them that same sort of anxiety around forgiveness and and when they see them and and just that super, super, super strong bond, you know, with another woman. In your life now that you guys are you've forgiven and you've moved on, do you see now the reason why you guys are not close anymore? Like what space that has provided you in your life and what opportunity you now have as like an independent woman outside of that relationship? Yeah, I see what it I see the reason behind it and also the opportunities that it's presented in both of our lives. I think it was something that needed to happen for both of us. It's not, it wasn't, you know, something where I look at it as only being a, a, a necessary thing in my life, but I think it was best for the both of us. And while it was definitely challenging to understand in that moment, uh, it is something that when you have space and time, like most things, you can look back and see what you may have done differently that, um, you know, now you can move forward in your life and, and learn from those mistakes and learn from those decisions that you might not make moving forward in your life and, and learn from them. And I think the most important thing for everybody, no matter what they're experiencing when it comes to forgiveness is, is to keep in mind that you should just be gentle with yourself because for most of us, it's an ongoing process and it's a, a journey and you don't just forgive and it's all good and you move forward. It's often a practice and everyone needs to figure out what that practice is in their life and what works for them. And for me, I had to be very gentle with myself in that process because you want it to be done and move on and, and live your life. But that's very challenging for a lot of us. And I think it's normal and it's okay. And it's there's no timetable on forgiveness. So I think it's important to be patient and kind with ourselves in that journey because it'll it'll come and happen when it's supposed to and when you're most importantly when you're open to it. Last question for me. I'm curious how forgiveness shows up in your romantic relationship. So with your husband, like have you kind of learned new aspects of being able to forgive, I don't know, more quickly almost? Like you're you're with each other most of the time you live with each other and I haven't lived with someone, so I can imagine that there are things happening all the time that you're just like, okay, got to forgive <laughs> that. Wow. <laughs> Here we go. Another Sorry. forgiveness. Like today, I forgive you. Yeah. Today, I forgive you for yeah. leaving yeah, Exactly. <laughs> you're like, yeah, you're really making me work yeah. for this book. I mean, <laughs> exactly. I think that, I mean, I, I'm very lucky that I'm, I think I'm married truly to one of the kindest human <laughs> beings on the face of the earth. And um, we don't, we're also newly married. So I totally understand that this is, you know, I look at people who've been married for 35 years and, you know, they have a totally different outlook than I have right now because I've been married, you know, I got married in last June. So I think uh, from what I'm told, forgiveness is a huge part of long term marriages. I know it will be a huge part of, of our relationship. But I think when you're able to work with each other and most importantly, communicate really well with each other and communicate openly and also make sure that you listen to the other person. That is the most important thing because at the end of the day, you love each other. And if you have love, then it makes everything else a lot better. And also it makes everything else kind of fade away at the end of the day because you have mm -hmm. love for one another. So again, though, I, I'm constantly, every single day, I'm just like, how are you like so? No, huh? <laughs> like it's like we're perfectly I'm sure it's like the same about you. <laughs> we're perfectly made for one another because there are you know things that he likes to do around the house that I'm not very good at. Such as oh my god, cooking, which is one of my mirrors, <laughs> <Dream, babe. laughs> Um, I know. So I, I again like we just majority of the time. It also helps when you can just kind of laugh at everything. It, yeah, which. Uh, we do a lot. So, um, but I also grew up in a big family. So I don't really get, I'm not really hung up on like the shoes or like, you know, being left around those kinds of things. Because I think when you grow Boys. up, especially mm -hmm. with brothers, 
But the living, I found that it's actually more challenging to live with. A, I have lived with a couple of my best friends, and that to totally. me is totally one hundred percent. Yep, it's like because you, yes, yeah. mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I love girls. Mm-hmm. I love yeah. girls so much. I'm the biggest girl champion. But dude, <laughs> every day. I mean, because I'm every day. It's like, what am I going to come home to? <laughs> like my moods change yeah. every day. You, you never, never know. know. And guys are always so consistent, just like so peaceful. <laughs> I mean. And of yeah. course, your husband is going to be the best yeah. roommate ever. Like, you guys are <laughs> the best. Like, <laughs> prayers. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I find that that is... Um, and I also think when it comes to being like a wife, I had the most incredible and have the most incredible role model as my mother because I just... My mom is truly... Especially when I was younger and watching her be a wife to my dad she was the most incredible wife Mm. ever and Mm -hmm. still, and still just as, you know, I'm constantly in awe of my mom because I just learned so much from her. And, and that's one of the amazing things is that whenever I have a question about anything, I'm able to call her, but I also grew up with a, a really incredible role model as a wife to learn from. Um, And I'm very grateful for that because she taught me a lot about how to be, a great, she great wife. cooking or no? Love that. <laughs> my mom doesn't know. I blame That's my amazing. mom for my life. Oh my God. <laughs> it's so crazy. Your mom's so stunning and you yeah. look like her and it's such a beautiful thing to like take on with your life. To be like, I love my mom. She's so beautiful and I look like her is like, <laughs> you, it's like carrying on the beautiful legacy of, of her. It's really nice. <laughs> Thank you. That's so nice. Yeah, I always, my mom can bake us really amazing mm-hmm. cakes that she's like to start documenting on her Instagram, which is really Cute. funny. Um, but she, uh, she's, my mom is incredible at pretty much everything. And the cooking part of it, you know, I, I think her and I are very similar, but we just don't, do not know what we're doing in that department. So it's part of my, it's part of my New Year's resolution. Too cute to cook. Uh, Your really. man's is cooking. You got a, he's got a hot <laughs> man's cooking. We don't need. We don't need cooking. <laughs> I don't cook either. Yeah. So whatever. And I think it's so sweet. Okay. Both you and your mom are like across the board, just inspirations to women. I mean, like my mom will be like, did you read the Sunday paper with Maria Sharp? <laughs> I know. <laughs> like she'll send it to me every Sunday. It. Like it's just really cool how it crosses yeah. generations. And I just, you know, I know you're probably very proud, but I just want to reiterate like yeah. how proud you should be. And yeah, we're just so excited to share this with our audience. I think, you know, forgiveness is uh, such an important conversation that we need to be having so that we can kind of give each other permission. You know, yeah. I think when you a part of forgiveness that's so hard is that you feel like you're alone. You're like, but I don't, uh, I don't, I don't know if I want to forgive or like, what does that mean? Or so I just think coming together in community is so important. So um, how can our audience connect with you and when and where can they find the book? This episode is actually coming out the day the book comes out. Just yeah. so, you know. so the book is out officially March 10th. So you can go grab it um, in bookstores. You can order it online. We have a um, a Facebook group that if you order the book and you want a signed okay. copy of the book, that's Love part it. of it. Um, and then we're doing a huge amount of um, signings because I'm going on a book tour. So if you're in any of those locations and want to come and listen to conversations, a lot of the people that are actually in the book wow. are going to be part of the conversations that we're doing on the road. So um, that'll be really exciting for me and just to kind of continue the conversation around forgiveness because again, it's something that you feel really alone in the journey. And my goal is to let people know that they're not alone and also open up the conversation because it's okay to talk about your struggle with forgiveness with your friends or with your family and 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 to be open about that because it's it's normal and we all deal with it. And forgiveness is something that unlike body image or you know advice for a recent college graduate or talking about mm-hmm. animal rescue for children forgiveness is is something that none of us are spared from experiencing in our life and we all are going to be faced with it at some point and um and so i think my hope is that this book is able to be accessed by a lot of people so they can be inspired by these amazing people's stories and uh, hopefully go into their life being able to be inspired to practice forgiveness. Mm, thank you so much. Yeah, forgiveness is the ultimate vulnerability, you know, if you really think about it. So thank you. This has been a joy and a delight. And um, 
seeing your beautiful face and your beautiful ring is just <laughs> a true gift to the world. I'm truly so, blinded. Yeah, truly see you later. Blinded by the smiles in the ring. It's like too much. Um, and then we'll put a post this so you guys can go see her on tour. I would love to see you if we are yeah. if you are in LA. I'd love to come find you and stalk you. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, yes, oh perfect. We are. We're going to be in LA. Row. So come. Yeah, First row. we'll be there. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much, Catherine. <laughs> Have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Catherine. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Thanks so much to Catherine. That was just such a joy to sit down with you, talk all things forgiveness. And if you relate to this episode, please share it and please pick up the gift of forgiveness anywhere books are sold. Share it with a friend. I've been like buying books in like small bulk so I can share it with friends. Love that. You know, like Oprah style. Yeah. It's cool to be like a book carrier in the purse person. Totally. You know what I mean? When people have been like, oh, I have a good book for you. I'm like, oh, people think of me. <laughs> totally. <laughs> I, I love that. So thank you, Catherine. As beautiful and cool on Zoom as you guys would imagine. Uh, I wanted to just read this kind note. So um, within our community, people are so kind and loving and supportive of one another. We see this happening with the ambassador program that we have for almost 30 nation. We ha- see this happening in the secret Facebook group at our retreats in our Austin retreat, all of these things are happening. And we just always want to shout out the beautiful women of our community. And I got an amazing DM that said, I turned 30 on Saturday and it was surreal moment and something I felt like I've worked up to over the last eight months of pure soul transformation. And almost 30 has been so vital in that transformation, guiding me through my Saturn return and shedding of an old self. I saw you guys in San Francisco a while ago when we were on tour and went alone. It was the first event I've ever gone to alone. It was incredible. I met so many lovely women. From there, I started to travel alone. I went to Central America, learned how to surf, got a yoga teacher training, and went to travel on solo from there. I swear I've connected deeper with this new version of myself, thanks in great part to you and Lindsay. I giggle and talk out loud when I'm listening. So basically, we are besties. Thank you so Mm -hmm. much for all you do. Oh, That is so exciting. It's so exciting to see the women of our community traveling Mm -hmm. alone and just being independent, doing the damn thing. So join us this year on our retreat in Calamigos at Malibu. Malibu, In Calamigos at Malibu. In Malibu at Calamigos. (laughs) (laughs) Say it one more time. Yeah, you can find us at Almost 30 Podcast on Instagram. You can find me on Instagram at It's Krista. And I'm at Lindsay Simsick. And the second half of the year, you know, a little bit in advance, but we'll be on tour again. So can't wait to meet you. And what's so cool is that you meet each other. So if you have not checked out the um, various chapters of Almost 30 Nation, we have an ambassador program. So there are ambassadors probably in a city near you creating community where they are. So uh, search on Facebook, see if you have a um, chapter near you. You can join the main secret Facebook group and then search from there. So thank you for listening as always. We're so proud of you. Always here for you. And we'll see you next time. See you soon. 